Hey y'all, welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. For meal number one, I'm gonna be showing y'all how I make my favorite fried chicken tenders and also this cheesy broccoli and rice casserole. This is one of my favorite side dishes. It pairs well with so many things and it's great to make for like a large gathering. So first up, I'm gonna take one cup of long grain white rice. I'm gonna put it in my pot and add in two cups of water and then just a spoonful of that better than bouillon paste. That just gives it some extra flavor. So while that's cooking up, I have just took a frozen bag of broccoli and steamed that in the microwave. Then I dumped it into this large mixing bowl and I have just whipped out my scissors instead of using a cutting board and I'm just cutting that up into fine little pieces. Then I'm taking half a block of Velveeta cheese that I have cubed up, throwing that in on top, and then I'm taking the cooked rice and adding that in on top. Next, I am going to add in a can of cream of chicken soup, followed by some pepper, some onion powder, and I guess that's garlic powder. And then I took some melted butter and just drizzled that over the top, followed by some milk. And I'm just going to stir all of that until it is combined perfectly. Then I'm gonna take out my nine by 13 casserole dish, spray it with some olive oil spray. And then I'm just gonna dump all of that out into it and spread it out evenly. That is going to go in my oven at 350 degrees for 45 minutes. Now onto the chicken. So I have soaked those tenders into some buttermilk overnight. I feel like it gives it a better flavor. It also really tenderizes the meat and gives it a better texture after it's cooked. And then plus I feel like it makes it a little more juicy. So if you wanna know how to remove the tendons easily from the tenderloins, if you haven't seen it floating all over the internet, head on over to my Instagram and look under my highlights. It's under chicken hack, um, so you can see how to do that. I couldn't fit it into this video because the format wouldn't fit. But anyways, now that I have got that chicken removed from the buttermilk and onto a separate plate, I'm just gonna season those with some salt, pepper, and some garlic powder. I've also added some flour to a large Ziploc bag. I'm also seasoning that really well. We don't want no bland chicken. So in there, I've added salt, pepper, lots of paprika. I'm also going to be adding a small amount of cayenne pepper. I didn't want it to be too spicy for my kids or anything. And then some more garlic powder. And I'm just going to close the top, give that a good shake to get that distributed. Then into a bowl, I'm going to make an egg wash. So I have just cracked in a couple of eggs and then I added a little bit of water, I believe. Um, I also usually add in some hot sauce, but I didn't have any. So that chicken's gonna go into the flour mixture. I'm gonna give it a good shake to make sure they all get coated. And then I'm just going to place those into that egg wash one by one. And then I'm gonna get in there with my hands and just make sure that they're all coated in that. Back into the flour they go. They're gonna get a final little shaky shaky. Then they're gonna go back onto that plate. And then I'm just gonna drop that into some hot oil on the stove. And you don't wanna overcrowd the pan. And I let those cook for about three minutes on each side, and I do set a timer for this. I completely forgot to show my plate, but here is the layout. I have those perfect chicken tenders, some collard greens, of course that casserole, and then just some fresh buttered corn on the cob. For meal number two, I'm starting off with a pasta salad. So to some boiling salted water, add your pasta of choice. I chose to do bow ties this time. And then I'm just going to chop up the add-in. So I have some cucumbers, aroma tomato, some salami, and some mozzarella cheese. I 
I love using the Olive Garden Italian dressing here, but really any Italian dressing would work. Even the like 99 cent stuff, it will still be just as yummy. So as you see, super simple. You just stir all that together and pop it in the fridge until ready to serve. I'm also gonna be doing some hot ham and cheese. I got some shaved ham from the deli at Walmart. I like using the Velveeta singles. And then here is the key, this jalapeno cheese dip. It makes them bomb, just trust me. You'll thank me later. So I'm just going to cook those up grilled cheese style. Um, this footage is kind of bad. I was running out of storage, so I had to make it quick. Um, but yeah, I just put a thin layer of that cheese sauce on top and brown that baby up. So here it is. It was seriously the best one I have ever made. All because that dip, I'm telling you. And I just sprinkled some pepper on my pasta salad. And then we have our Kentucky staples, some Grippo chips, one of my favorites, and then a nice cold L8, the perfect summer dinner. Up next, we are doing spaghetti squash. So I'm just going to split that thing in half and then scoop out the strings and seeds. Then I'm going to take some olive oil spray, spray that all over, or you could just rub in some olive oil. Then I'm taking this Trader Joe's 21 Seasoning Salute, generously seasoning that and placing it face down onto a greased baking sheet. And that's going to go in the oven at 375 degrees. It's hard to say a time because it just varies depending on the size, but I would at least set your timer for the 30 minutes and start checking from there. I mean, you'll know when it's easily pierced with a fork. So I'm just taking my fork and fluffing that up. Now I'm going to get started on the filling. I'm just heating up some olive oil, letting that get hot and then sauteing in some minced garlic. Then I'm going to add in a whole container of fresh spinach and that's going to wilt down really quickly and look like you put basically nothing in there but then i am going to add in some fresh parmesan cheese i'm using this frigo i guess that's how you'd say it brand then i'm going to add in some heavy whipping cream followed by a little bit of cream cheese and i'm just going to let that cook down and melt together and then lastly just season it with some salt and some black pepper that is going to get evenly distributed between each spaghetti squash shell. And I'm just going to take some shredded mozzarella cheese and pop that back into the oven until it is looking like this, nice and melted and bubbly. If you are on the fence about trying spaghetti squash, I highly recommend making it this way. I have done it this way a handful of times now, and I just love it. I mean, what's not to love about cheesy garlic goodness? It is amazing. Meal number four, I'm going to be showing y'all how I made the absolute best baby back ribs. And these are actually done in the Instant Pot. So, the first thing I did was I got started on this spice mixture. All that's in there is some brown sugar, paprika, onion and garlic powder, cumin, chili powder, cayenne pepper, and some black pepper. The first thing you are going to want to do is remove the membrane off of the back of these ribs. The way I do that is I start in the middle and I just um, kind of put my finger down in there, work my way on down, and then you are going to pull up quickly and it should pull off all in one piece. I did kind of struggle there towards the end. If you got a paper towel though, I'm sure it would be even easier. But yeah, you're just going to toss that and then you are going to take that rub mixture and massage that very generously into the meat on both sides. This is a great spice mixture recipe. It would be great on chicken, pork, whatever your little heart desires. Next, I have placed the trivet into the bottom of my Instant Pot and I'm just adding in some apple cider vinegar and some apple juice. The recipe will be linked down below in the description box as always if you want exact measurements. I have just put the ribs into the pot, um, the meaty side towards the back then I've placed my top on and you're going to set the timer for 23 minutes I let that natural release for five minutes and then I release the pressure then onto a foil lined cookie sheet I place them and I'm just taking the juices from the bottom of the instant pot um, drizzling that over the top and then I'm taking some sweet baby rays honey barbecue that will always be my favorite barbecue sauce and I'm just going to brush that on evenly and that's going to go under the broiler for five minutes to really let that stick to it and caramelize i was super impressed that these cooked so fast but were still fall off the bone tender the flavor was out of this world and um, i sent the leftovers with my in-laws and even they said they were the best ribs they ever had um, i also served it with some sauteed zucchini and some loaded baked potatoes this was actually josh and i's seven year wedding anniversary dinner and yeah i'm patting myself on the back because it was just so so good meal number five easiest dinner ever and that is taco salads so i'm just adding in a combination of lettuces and tossing those around 
making a mess. Is anyone else obsessed with these bowls and plates from Target? The ones that are like less than a dollar. I just think they are the cutest colors. They are the perfect size. Um, you can place them in the microwave, in the dishwasher. And yeah, I'm not sponsored in any way. I just, I seriously love them. And I think it's a great option for people who are maybe starting out on their own for the first time. But anyways, back to the food. Um, I've just added down some taco meat, some sharp cheddar cheese, some diced tomatoes. I whipped up a quick, fresh guacamole. Once again, recipe down below. For my dressing on this day, I just did some homemade ranch, drizzled a good amount of that on, and then I'm just taking these round tortilla chips and placing those all around the bowl just to be, you know, extra. How gorgeous does that look? As you see, it took no time at all to whip together, and it's just so good. For the last meal idea, I have one chicken breast on my baking sheet. I've drizzled it with olive oil and seasoned it with some lorries and some black pepper. I also have some fresh broccoli that's been tossed in olive oil and some of this tangy garlic ranch and chive seasoning by Tasty. I find that at Walmart, it's great on roasted vegetables or anything really. Um, and I just pop that in my oven at 400 for 25 minutes. I let that chicken rest for about 10 minutes and then I thinly sliced it. I'm going to be using this Joseph's lavish bread, um, and then I'm just going to place that onto a clean piece of tin foil, and I'm just going to top it with some barbecue sauce, cheese, and chicken. This is one of those flatbreads cut in half and it was still super filling. I did drizzle it some more of that homemade ranch. As you can tell, I like things really saucy. And then, yeah, I just have that roasted broccoli. Um, this was crispy on like the edges and then the middle was kind of soft. So I'll show you in a minute how I folded it up, but I kind of folded it up like a taco and I still just cannot get over how good these were. Like you need to stop what you're doing and go make these. They were that good. But yeah, that's going to wrap up this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one.